Hey everybody, Sam Haymart with Test Driven TV. I would be lying if I said I wasn't excited about test driving this week, the 2024 Acura Integra Type S. A lot of people have been asking me to test drive it, so I finally have it. So we're gonna have a good look at it inside now. We're gonna take it for a drive out here on my favorite windy mountain road, and then I'm gonna tell you what I really think. I have to tell you folks, this is one of the most anticipated test drives this year. And by that, I mean a lot of my friends who know what I do for a living have been asking me, when are you gonna test drive the Integra Type S? Well, it's finally here. And I gotta tell you, I have been looking at this really carefully because I just test drove the Honda Civic Type R about a month ago. And I love that car. I've test driven it many times. It's made it to my buy it list almost every time I've tried it. And well, a lot of people would tell you that this is mechanically identical to a Honda Civic Type R. That is true. However, there's a lot that makes this car different and there's a lot that brings more to the table for this car. And we're gonna, I'm gonna do my best to talk about that. I don't wanna be just another journalist going, ah, it's just a Honda Civic Type R with a bunch of stuff on it. That may be true factually, but Acura's gone through a lot of work to make this car unique in a lot of ways. So let's start with the styling. Look at these wheels. Oh my God, I love these copper wheels. Now these are of course an optional wheel, 19 by nine and a half. And through those wheels, you can see the Brembo brakes on this thing, nice red calipers. And it's just a nice look. I think along with the fender flares and the lower rockers that are a little bit wider, uh, that makes this car just dead sexy i mean i'm just going to say it and of course it's just a little bit lower to the ground with the performance suspension look at the hood there's an air extractor vent there the front fascia the lower splitter entirely unique to this car type s on the grill and at the back look at that exhaust oh my god that is massive and that's a real deal if you stick your leg up under there on a nice hot summer day after you've been driving it you'll burn yourself that's real and they sound good we'll get to that in a minute and of course that bumper is styled a little more aggressively with an air splitter type design up on the deck lid optional on this is the carbon fiber spoiler really really nice i think and of course this is a hatch stepping back and looking at this i think really the takeaway when it comes to styling and overall presentation is that you know and i hate to keep mentioning civic type r but there's a lot of guys their inner child just wants that honda civic type r look at that it's got all the stuff i want it it's hot but they'd never be able to park it in the executive parking lot. Uh, it would never pass the sniff test. A lot of guys, you know, maybe their wife would be like, no, you're not driving that. And maybe you wouldn't want to drive it to church. This is a car that you can pass all of those tests. You can take it to the country club on Sunday and you can take it to the racetrack on Saturday. And that's really, to me, what you get here. This is a Honda Civic Type R in a business suit. From behind the wheel, the Acura Integra Type S is just as sexy and sporty as it is on the outside. This interior is likely as nice as they come in the Integra. It's got a two-tone red and black in this particular one. And the seats are upholstered with an ultra suede, which is not leather. And as you look around, you can see that it all flows very nicely. And as expected here, we've got very high quality switch gear, high quality accoutrements and it's very pleasing to the eye it's very precise and if you spent any time in the honda civic you'll see a lot of familiar pieces and parts here and that's not a bad thing at all that's not a put down the honda civic has one of the best interiors in the business price be darned and here it fits just as well i love the metal grates on the dash it's a nice high quality feel and they actually feel cold to the touch so you know it's the real thing and this has a unique steering wheel with a Type S logo on it. And ahead of me, a fully digital instrument cluster, a little over 10 inches. And you can customize that. It changes with the drive modes, but you can also customize what information sets that you see there. The center stack starts with a 9-inch touchscreen at the top. And we'll talk about that separately. Below that, hard controls for the HVAC. And down here... A nice big cubby for the phone, and this one has a wireless charger down there, all the ports you need. And my favorite part, the manual shifter, six-speed manual, and you'll note that the shift knob on this one, it does have metal in it. 
on the top and at the bottom, but it does have an actual rubberized center part. So it's still going to burn your hand on a hot day, but not nearly as bad as a Civic Type R, which is all metal. It's going to put that tattoo right there on your palm. To the left of it, you've got drive modes and parking brake, big cup holders down low, and in the center console, a pretty good level of storage in here for a car this size. It is about the size of a square tissue box. As I sit here in these seats, they are quite comfortable. I will tell you though that I liked the seats in the Type R better. They seem to hold me better, and these seats are very stiff. They're supportive, but they just don't quite feel as comfortable. This has a power adjustment over here with memory. Your rear seat passengers are going to find a reasonably good level of space for a car of this size. I am sitting down relatively low, but that is to be expected in a car. And as you can see, I do have a pretty good space. These seats are set for my height, about 5'8", 5'9", depending on what I'm wearing for shoes. I've got about three inches ahead of my knees. I could have somebody a bit taller up here and I would be fine. Looking around, you can see that I've got cup holders in the middle of this seat. This is a four-seater because we do have a hatch at the back. And when I look at amenities, I see the back of the console and there are no vents. At $55,000, there are no AC vents in the back seat. That's an omission. As I look around here, just like in the Honda Civics that I've tested, the trim is decontented in the back seat. If you look at the door trim on the side, it's not quite up to the same level as what you find in the front. They sort of cheap out when it comes to the back seat. But when it comes to the good things, the seat does fold down in a 60-40 split and it gives you a nearly flat low floor back there. So it gives you the versatility almost of an SUV with a sports sedan slash hatch, a tour as it were. And so you can throw all of your luggage and you can go on a tour. Don't you love that? Now underneath that floor, you're not going to find a spare here to be expected in this class lately. You will find a fix-a-flat kit back there, so don't get a torn open tire someplace where you don't have cell service because you're going to be in trouble. So overall, this is an interior that I think looks really good. It's got reasonably good quality, although I did find a few little fit and finish things here and there. But the design and the switch gear, the quality, the layout, Overall, the general comfort are good. It's a great place to do the business of driving, but when I stand back and look at the big picture, it's missing a lot of features at this price tag. A power seat for the passenger, ventilated seats, a sunroof, vents in the back, and the decontenting of the trim back there in the back seat. There's just a lot of little things where at $55,000, this car feels like it's a little bit light on the feature content. Overall though, very well done interior. It gets four out of five stars. The infotainment system here is a nine inch touchscreen audio system by ELS. Works very well in terms of sound quality. It sounds great. It's got FM, AM, Bluetooth connectivity, satellite radio, and of course you can connect with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So the feature content up to that point is pretty good. The menus have reasonably good graphics. It's kind of laid out old school and we talked about that with the Civic Type R because it's virtually identical there. It does have hard controls on the left, a home button, a volume knob, and tuning buttons. That's a good thing but it's missing a little bit of feature content. At $55,000 there's no nav here. No nav at 55k. And yeah, you can use Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, fine, but it's expected to me at least when you get into the over $40,000 price range that so there's going to be nav sitting here, whether it be a subscription or whether it be native. We have neither of those things here. Also, the backup camera is a single view, not a 360 degree view. Again, not a big deal in a performance sedan or a five door hatch, as it were, but it's missing at this price tag on a comparative set. So there's a lot of little things that uh, this isn't quite up to speed when it comes to uh, keeping up with the Joneses, but it looks good and it sounds good and it's very easy to use. The system gets four out of five stars. All right, my friends, it's finally time to take a drive. So what's under the hood here? Well, that's really what you're paying for. This is the two liter turbocharged engine, the high output version that you're going to find under the Honda Civic Type R. I said that again, darn it. But things are a little bit different here. This one's got a slightly different throttle map and it sounds different. The tuning is different. Uh, 320 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque. So 
the actual horsepower level, five more than the Civic Type R. But when I talk about that throttle map being sort of redone, it feels different. So things come on a little bit differently throughout the driving experience. And really the main thing is how it feels. And what they really wanted to achieve is something that feels a little bit more torquey around town. And so it just comes on a little bit sooner in that throttle travel so just the immediate perception is it feels torquier and for the fact that this car is really intended to be more of a street performance car than a track car that makes sense so if you watch my videos you know the question i always like to ask is how does it go now i've done a few launches here and i've had to sort of noodle it and go hit the rev limiter and 60. Woo. So because of the fact that this has a slightly different throttle map, I found that it's actually a little bit easier to modulate and to drive around town. That torque comes on a little bit easier as you lay into the throttle. You don't have to push in and wind it out as much, or at least the perception of doing that in the Civic Type R. Damn it, I said it again. So power's good. It revs out 7,000 RPM redline and it's got a nice sweet sound Woo. and of course this does have the electronic rev matching feature so it makes you seem like you're really a pro but the fact of the matter is it just makes it easier and more enjoyable so you know up here on a mountain road like this you can just let this thing sing man Woo. listen to that And because that throttle mapping, this thing just feels like the torque is coming on a little bit more aggressively, which I like. I'm a big block V8 guy, so I don't like widening out or feeling like I have to. Wow, this is just absolute bliss. This engine sings. Listen to that. Woo! I could do this all freaking day, man. Oh, man. Well, so you know I like the engine. You know I do, right? Listen to that. So driving it around town is great. This shifter with a little bit of a rubbery grip on it makes it easier on those hot days here in Arizona. So living with it every day also has, you know, what's it really like at the gas pump? 21 city, 28 highway, 24 combined. That's exactly what I got this week with it. Uh, so it actually sort of met the mark in fuel economy. But, you know, high performance car, less important. Woo. <laughs> I'm just really happy. Uh, it's a great motor. It's a lot of fun, puts a smile on my face. It's a car that's uh, definitely gonna do that for most people that buy it. So yeah, this powertrain gets five out of five stars. Now this chassis, again, mechanically identical to the Civic Type R, but it's got a lot of nuanced differences. The settings on the adjustable dampers are different. The drive modes are different. Generally, it's just more comfortable. It's a softer setting all the way across the board. Now, it doesn't mean it doesn't have grip. This has a unique tire from the Civic Type R, and it's just a little bit more of a forgiving, less track-oriented tire, more street-oriented. And so in that way, it tends to be quieter on the highway, this got 63.7 decibels on our 70 mile an hour test, two full decibels plus quieter than on the Civic Type R. And that's because that car has a lot of the sound deadening removed. They've kept it here because this is a luxury car. The steering has a nice lightweight feel going into these corners, even on the sport modes. So it's got a nice direct precision to it. I love that. And even though this does have softer suspension settings across the board, it doesn't mean that it's soft and cushy. It's still every bit as stiff and well damped as it needs to be to make a drive out here on the back roads quite enjoyable. It's just not all out track like the Civic Type R. I like it better if I'm honest. It's just more comfortable. And maybe it's because I'm 54 and I just like a little bit of a more refined ride. I love the Civic Type R, it was on my I'd buy list, but uh, this is just a little bit more of a livable everyday setup, I think. A nice balance, I'd say. Ah, again, man, I could just do this every freaking day. 
this is what you pay the money for. This chassis gets five out of five stars. Woo! <laughs> oh man, I wanted to keep this. I really do. All right, everybody, I have had an absolute blast out here test driving this on my favorite windy mountain road. And in case any of you are wondering, this is Highway 88 in Arizona, just northeast of Tortilla Flat, out past the end of the earth, as a lot of people like to call it. And that's because it dead ends in about a mile. And it takes about an hour to get here from town, downtown Phoenix. And so most people don't bother to come all the way out here. And that's why there's no traffic. I'm out here on this beautiful day, driving this car, having a good time, and there's not a single soul out here. So that's wonderful. It's a secret, don't tell anybody. So this car, let's talk about, is it competitive? Is it worth the money? $55,000 as tested, it's kind of pricey, but so is an Audi, so is a BMW, so are a number of other options that you can look at sort of in this range. And it does cost more than the Honda Civic Type R, but it's more than that here and there. But I will tell you, I did find, when it comes to the value makeup, I did find that it's missing uh, quite a few little things inside power seat for the passenger, ventilated seat, sunroof. Uh, the infotainment system isn't fully featured as you might expect in this price range and some other little things. Not big deals, but little things. The warranty here, not the longest in the business. And I did find a few little quality issues, fit and finish on the interior, that kind of thing, some buzzing and rattling as we were driving it out here on the road. Stuff that I don't expect in a luxury car. But that said, still very good, I put value four out of five stars when you put that in with everything we've already talked about we're at four and a half stars for the review and you know what else just like the honda civic type r ba bing this makes my i buy list yeah so if i were looking for a luxury front wheel drive manual hot back road car i would totally buy this and uh I would honestly have a tough time choosing between the Civic Type R and this. And really, like we talked about earlier in the video, this is a Civic Type R in a business suit. And yes, it's got a lot of little nuances that make it a little bit more than just that. But this is a car for the person that wants to have the Civic Type R, but really isn't planning on taking it to the racetrack all the time. It's a little bit more geared to the street. And it's a little bit more geared to driving it to work and parking it in the executive parking lot where your boss isn't going to look at you funny and go, geez, hasn't he grown up? <laughs> so that's what I like about it. And it just really has a nice, mature, svelte, and, well, dead sexy character. So there you go. I totally buy it. Yeah. So if you want to see our latest video, you can see that right there. Better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel right down there. Either way, stay tuned.